Well, good morning. I don't know how advanced um, U.S. traffic laws are or the way that we handle them. Um, I think it's a global responsibility and we all have some common uh, problems these days. So traffic in one place isn't that much different than traffic in another. One model that we try to use in the United States, though, for traffic safety is the combination between less legislation, enforcement, education, and civic responsibility. They work hand in hand. The first part of this is legislation and enforcement. You have to have specific uh, traffic codes and specific traffic offenses uh, that can be enforced by the police and accepted by the community. Though also, uh, those offenses also have to be outlined um, with the penalties that are involved with those offenses. Whether it's fines or incarceration, mandatory re-education, suspension of driver's licenses, but couple that with the training of police officers so that they have a real knowledge of the law and the penalties that are involved in those. And third, we couple that with the enforcement of traffic laws with technology. New technology is developing every day. We try to take advantage of that to make our jobs easier and to support the police. Some of the criminal code um, violations in the United States, and this is not all of them, this is just a few. Speeding fines, obviously. Reckless driving, uh, what we consider road rage in the United States, uh, very aggressive drivers. Failure to stop, whether it's at yield signs or stop signs or stop lights. Drunken driving, that's uh, a number one killer of people on our roads. Seat belt laws, we enforce those. Child restraint seats and the use of cell phones. In many jurisdictions, there are prohibitions against the use of cell phones while you're driving. In other jurisdictions, <coughs> there is uh, rules for uh, no hands, hands-free operation of a cell phone while you're driving. It depends on the jurisdiction. With 50 states, there's 50 different laws in 50 different jurisdictions, and sometimes they get a little complicated. The penalties can range from payment of fines, to incarceration, uh, suspension of driving privileges, or the requirement for re-education, uh, requiring you to go to classes and to be examined. Another thing that we use in the United States with our driver's licenses, after so many times that we've been stopped by police officers for traffic violations, we're on a point system. So you get so many points with your driver's license. Once that gets down to uh, one or two points left on your driver's license, then the, administratively a judge can force you to go back to re-education or to limit your driving privileges. For example, if only from work to home or home to work. You can't drive anywhere else. Police training, well there's a lot of different models for these. Every country has their own. Each one works for them. Uh, but they have a common factor. The police know the violations and understand what the offenses are and the violations of this code. They need a real knowledge of it, so they have to study it. But most importantly is there's got to be a public commitment that the police do their job, whether it's from the government itself or from whether it's from the society. There has to be a support for the police to be able to enforce their job and enforce traffic regu regulations. Technology, the primary thing for technology is it's just a tool. It's a tool for the police to be able to use. It provides some advantages for us. For example, radar for speed movement makes an accurate uh, assessment when you're going to court to prosecute somebody for it. There are no gray areas with that. Cameras at intersections and dash cams. We'll kind of go into this a little bit more. A dash cam promotes at least two things. It promotes officer safety and it prevents corruption because you have a record of any incident that occurs. The, car, the dash cam is mounted in the police car and it films everything that was going on. A couple of things that are a benefit to it here is you have the license number of the vehicle. You can identify both the police officer and the suspect. You have a, a date and a timestamp on the dash cam. 
and it provides evidence. In case you've called into court on an issue, it also provides you evidence that the crime happened or the offense happened and how it was handled by the police. Cameras at stoplights, well, we can't have police officers everywhere and they can't catch every violator. So some places in the United States, we have set cameras up at stoplights to catch violators. They take a picture of their driver's license or the, of their license plate and the violation. And then with that, it's mailed to the uh, individual at their home and they can pay the fine. If they don't, then it goes into a central database. And if they do get stopped again, uh, they'll be brought before a judge to answer the charges uh, that they violated. And it can also be used in high traffic areas where incidents of accidents or um, major traffic jams can, can cause problems for police. And it's centrally mo monitored and lo um, by the police so that they can send other units out there to try to help alleviate the traffic jams or to respond to the accidents. <clears throat> 